Hi, my name is Claire. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I talk all about how to use planning and organization to shift your life into authentic alignment with your soul's purpose. So today I'm talking about how do you get back on track when you feel like you've gone off course, you haven't completed what you're wanting to complete, you're now fast approaching your deadline if you haven't missed it already, and you just feel a little bit lost, a little bit hopeless, kind of feel like you're wanting to give up, or maybe you have given up and you're trying to figure out how you get back on track. How do you get back into the journey that you are wanting to go? How do you get back to shifting your life to where you're ultimately wanting it to be and what you're wanting it to look like? So the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because I have definitely been feeling this way quite a bit lately. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, I do have a tendency to kind of overcommit myself minimize what the actual time and effort and energy allocation may be needed to accomplish something, or just if I've already committed to things that are probably my max capacity, but something else comes up that really excites me that I really want to do, I feel called to do, I do have a tendency to kind of go for that and say, yeah, I can totally make that work. And then when push comes to shove, it is kind of, you know, pushing me past where I probably should be for my mental capacity, where I probably should be for the amount of time allocation that I have in my life. And sometimes I do find myself getting past that point where I'm feeling like I'm causing myself to burn out a little bit. It's getting harder to stay on track. I find myself procrastinating because it's too many things. And that's actually what led me to create my Overcome the Overwhelm Bundle that is available on Etsy. And I did just do a whole series on the Overcome the Overwhelm bundle and the six steps that I do go through with that workbook for goal setting and bringing your life into alignment um, and accomplishing your dreams and bringing those goals to life. That being said, I'm not perfect. And as I mentioned, the reason that bundle even came to be is because I found myself in a position where I overcommitted. I've had so many things that I wanted to organize. I was getting that analysis paralysis where there's so many things and you get to a point where you don't really know how to move forward on any of them because it just there's too many things to think about. So with that, I want to say that I've learned quite a few things so far and I am still in the final months of this crazy chaotic period where I have a lot of deadlines coming up for the things that I previously committed to, you know, three, four, five, six months ago, and they are now kind of getting to their end points, and I am finding myself in a place where it all feels a little bit daunting to be completely transparent. So throughout the months of July and August, I had a lot of things I needed to do and I needed to accomplish. I had a course that I had a deadline set for. I had a trip planned home back to Canada. I had a big portfolio I was working on. I had a product launch coming up. And so I found myself in the kind of second half of July and through a lot of August, feeling like I was just kind of spinning my wheels and trying to get everything done. And I did manage to get all of that stuff done that was due back then. However, I have found because of that going kind of like full energy, full steam ahead for that period. Throughout September, I have been feeling like I need to, to rest, I needed to recuperate. I would have all of these plans of getting things done. And although I have been checking off some items on my list that have been on my list for a long time that really did need to get sorted and were important, a lot of my other items where I've now got upcoming deadlines did kind of fall to the wayside a little bit. But that being said, I do fully acknowledge that you need those periods of rest, of recuperation, so that you are able to operate at your full potential. So what I've been doing is for the month of September, where I felt like I needed to rest and when I say rest, I mean allow myself to have my evenings for the most part to just chill out after I work, 
I allow myself to take the weekends where maybe I chip away at a few things, but for the most part, I have honestly just been resting, spending time with my animals, spending time with my husband, having movie nights, just, you know, kind of doing nothing of much significance. Like we're not going out and doing things. We're just hanging out at home. But I also feel like I needed that. And especially with the seasonal shift, which I do feel like has hit me exceptionally hard this year because I've spent my summer somewhere that's really dry, that is really sunny. And I'm from Vancouver and our summers are typically like that. We usually still have the rain and the overcast during the summer months. So I feel like being somewhere where for the past three, three, four months or so, there's been, you know, maybe one or two days of rain total. Every other day has been dry. It's been really, really hot. And then going from that to suddenly the seasons change. It's getting overcast. It's getting dark quite a bit earlier in the day. And I found that that's really impacted me with my mental state, with the amount of energy I have. With just my being able to function and get through my day to day, I have been definitely struggling for the past month. So I did want to talk about that because I feel like that's something a lot of people struggle with seasonal affective disorder. A lot of people are impacted when the sun is no longer out, the days get shorter. And a lot of people, I feel like in this time of the year or heading into winter even, can find themselves struggling to stay on course, to continue to be productive, get things done, because this is kind of the period of the year where so many different species, they hibernate. We want to just curl up inside. We want to kind of hide away and just take that time for ourselves, right? So I feel like the summer and spring are when everybody wants to go out and do things. Well, then the autumn and the winter, we tend to naturally kind of want to be inside and be cozy and spend our time doing, you know, those kind of things around the house. So I did want to acknowledge that and also just say, if you've been feeling a similar way, please do give yourself the grace and give yourself the space to be able to take that time to rest. That being said, at the end of the day, you know, we do have goals, we do have things that we're trying to accomplish. And there is a balance in allowing yourself to rest and acknowledging when that rest may be more so centered around procrastination and when we need to push ourselves. Because maybe the reason that we're hesitant to get things done, though it may be the need to rest, it may also be a fear of moving forward, and maybe a sense of overwhelm that's keeping us stuck in one place. And there may be other reasons behind it. So when you get to a certain point and you feel it in yourself that you do need to start to push yourself out of your comfort zone, push yourself to take steps towards your goals, I would strongly encourage you to listen to that inner voice. And so what I wanted to talk about is how do you go from that place of feeling behind, of maybe feeling a little bit hopeless, and moving back to being on track? And as I did just allude to, I feel like it really comes down to pushing yourself. So even if you don't feel like taking the actions, doing them anyway. If you have something that you're wanting to accomplish, break it down into baby steps. And allow yourself to just go step by step and make small progress consistently. And sometimes it comes down to just taking messy action, allowing yourself to move forward and get things done imperfectly. Still try to do as good a job as you can, but don't hold yourself back by looking for absolute perfection. It doesn't exist. Just do the best that you can. And allow yourself, again, like to take imperfect action because action is going to move you forward. We also learn by doing. So the more action that you take, the more things that you put out into the world, even if it's imperfect, the more experienced you'll get taking those actions and the better you will get. But not only that, but the more quickly you will improve and get comfortable doing it. And start to shift it into something that becomes more of a natural action to take because you're doing it so often. And as you're making progress on your goals, you're getting things checked off your list. It will also build your confidence. 
It will build more excitement around what you're creating because you're seeing yourself moving down that path that you've set out for yourself. So try not to procrastinate. Tune into yourself and listen to yourself. And if you feel that you need to be at a point where you're pushing yourself, even though you don't feel like doing something, do that. Break it down into small baby steps and take imperfect action. Just get that momentum moving again. Get the ball rolling. And you will find that once you're out of your stagnant space where you're not moving forward and you're maybe on pause or in rest mode, once you start to do things, you will find that it becomes easier and easier to stay motivated and continue down that path. The other thing that I would really say to look at if you're struggling to get things done is to take your surroundings into consideration. So maybe it's something where if you're staying home, you feel like you're in rest mode and maybe you want to go to a coffee shop, go to the library, go somewhere else that is shifting your environment and shifting the energy so that you can be more inclined to do the things that you're wanting to do. Because maybe if you're trying to do it at home, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that you can kind of do to procrastinate. Maybe you suddenly decide that you really need to clean the kitchen. Maybe you suddenly decide that you really need to do the laundry or you really need to vacuum or you really need to turn that picture up or fix X, Y, or Z. And there's you know, maybe you need to walk the dog. Maybe you need to do so many things that are kind of at your fingertips when you're at home. And we can really allow ourselves to go down that little spiral of finding all of these little things we can do, which are not the thing that we really should be doing and that we know will move us forward the most. So I do love to go to the library when I'm feeling like I'm a little bit stuck and I'm struggling to get things done, especially when I'm working on schoolwork or anything that's on my computer. I find that going into that space where everyone around me is typically focused and quiet, people are doing what they're needing to do, it can be inspiring and it can just help you to put your music in, focus on what you're doing. You know that once you've done what you set out to do, you can leave, you can go back to the comfort of your home, you can go back to doing something that might be more enjoyable, but it's also going to give you the satisfaction and the joy in having completed what you set out to complete. And so I would definitely encourage you to look at that, look at your surroundings, look at any other aspects of your life, any other distractions that you can potentially remove while you're completing whatever it is that you're wanting to complete. Um, and again, it might be something that you're trying to do at home. Maybe it's something where you are wanting to integrate some movement into your body. And that can often be helped if you go outside, you go for a walk, you go to a park. Maybe it's something where you go to a gym rather than exercising at home because that is a designated place that you know when you're there, that's what you're going to get done. It's intentional, your whole outing is intentional, and it is specific as well. The other piece with going to a location that is designated to do a specific thing is you know that while you're there, your time will be utilized more effectively. You're not going to have the tendency to delay it once you're there, right? So once you go to the library and you sit down, you're probably... A, you're removing the distractions, but you're probably not going to go and do little side tasks because you're there with an intention, you're there with a specific focus, a specific task at hand that you're wanting to complete that you've identified probably before you even got there. Same with the gym, you're going there to exercise, you're probably not just going to sit somewhere on your phone scrolling, you're going to actually go and do what you set out to do. So with that, it can also be a much more effective use of your time because you're not allowing it to drag out across multiple hours, across multiple days. It will just be kind of completed within the short amount of time that is actually required to complete it. And so sometimes that can help as well with moving you 
forward towards your goals. If you did find this helpful, if you have any other tips or tricks below or you want to chat about your journey, definitely feel free to leave a comment below. I will also link my website in the down bar and you can always send me a message through there or you can send me a message through Instagram. I would love to connect with you. If you did enjoy this video and you made it this far, please do give it a like. If you're not already, please subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified each time I upload. Thank you for watching and I am wishing you a beautiful week ahead.